What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down five tips for wide receivers to make more explosive cuts. So we're going to be talking a lot about foot strike. We're going to be talking a lot about how your upper half will tie into the cut, and then also we're going to be talking about that violent hip drop and how you guys can get more explosion out of that. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to develop your explosion, power, your speed, your strength in the gym, check out that very first link in the description below for our 12-week-long wide receiver gym workout plan. So what it is, it's a 12-week-long schedule schedule with daily wide receiver gym exercises and workout splits. We break down every single exercise with sets, repetitions. We give you the rest period in between, and we include examples of each exercise in a picture format. So check out that very first link below if you want a three-month-long wide receiver gym workout plan. We include conditioning days, rest days, then obviously upper body and lower body workout splits. Check it out. Very first link in the description below. Let's get started with this video. So first clip, first tip to get a more explosive cut as a wide receiver at the top of the route, especially, or on anything is going to be having a great foot strike. So what does that mean? So so many wide receivers struggle with this. So we're looking at Stevie Johnson do a rocker step. So a rocker step is where like, let's say he's running a corner. You would step to the corner first. So like if he's here and he's on the left side, you go left, then right. That would be a rocker step. It's like a double move. You'd go one, then two. So now the thing about this rocker step is that a lot of guys will just strike the ground on their heels. And then a lot of guys will strike the ground on their toes. Now, the problem with that is, is if you strike the ground, see when Johnson hits the ground first, he He's on that middle arch of his foot, right? And then when he pushes to the second move, where is he striking? He's on the middle arch of his foot. That's the position of explosion that we will get because A, that's a, that's a solid enough cut to be able to slow me down, but B, I can push off of that arch, which gives me more explosion. It makes it more fluid and it gives me more of a push and acceleration out of there. So what a lot of guys will struggle with is that when they strike the ground first, they'll be on their tippy toes. They think that they always want to be on their toes. You want to run on your toes. You want to run on the balls of your feet, but when you make that cut in the ground, your whole foot has to get down. It's got to be that arch of the foot because that's where you get that explosion. If you guys are on your tippy toes when you cut, you're going to be falling forward. And then same thing, if you guys strike the ground on the heel, your leg's going to pop straight up in the ground and you're going to lean back. So we want to make sure that we are on that arch of the foot. So the first tip to get that explosive cut, that explosive two cuts, if you will, is to stay on that arch of the foot, strike the ground on the arch, like that part in your foot, that arches, right? That's exactly what I'm referring to. And then push off of the inside portion of that arch to get some drive. It's almost like a pitch in baseball. Like you got the rubber right here. You're on the mound. You want to push off of that arch to be able to get some explosion and get out of this route. So the first tip to make a more explosive cut is strike the ground on that arch of the foot. Let's watch the thing again, full speed. Great job hitting that one, two and having that great explosive burst. Now, second tip to having a more explosive cut off the line of scrimmage, top of the route, anywhere is you have to bring your hip with the cut. Your hip and your foot have to be attached because if you guys are cutting and you guys are stepping wide to sell the route and you don't bring your hip with your foot, you are going to be off balance and lack explosiveness. So let's watch Think Full Speed. So you see how Gallup does a great job on both of these cuts, actually throwing outside the DB's frame, actually getting him off the platform and being able to move, right? So again, everybody knows when it comes to playing wide receiver that the goal is to threaten a DB vertically or threaten him inside, depending on what I'm doing off the line of scrimmage. And hell, even top of the route, a lot like that Stevie Johnson route. He had to actually sell the post fake, right? So I need to treat it where it's like driving. You got the left lane, you got the middle lane, which is where the DB he's at and then the right lane. If I'm trying to get him off the platform to the right lane, I actually have to threaten him here. So that means I actually have to step with my foot all the way outside of his frame, as I like to say. Now, everybody loves to say this when I say that. They love to say, oh, well, if you step too wide, you're going to be slow. And yeah, you don't want to obviously reach and try to step way out here because that's unrealistic. But if you step outside of his frame like so, and you attach your hip to the foot, you're still going to be in an explosive position. They call it throwing your hip. You want your hip to go with the cut. My hip goes with my foot and that's how I stay in that explosive position because when your hip goes, your upper body goes. And when your upper body goes with the cut, you're in a balanced position, but you're still able to sell the route. So make sure, fellas, and again, same thing on the second move. What does he do? He throws the hip, steps actually outside of his frame, and the hip and the upper body are connected. So all three points of attack, you got foot, you got hip, and you got upper body. Those all have to go with the cut to be able to stay in that explosive position so you have this cut underneath your frame because everybody knows if you're inside of your frame, you're going to probably have a more explosive burst. But at the same time, we are still able to sell the route because it's important that we sell the route. Not a lot of people can sell the route and maintain explosion at the exact same time. So second tip to get more explosive cuts is that your hip has to be attached with your foot no matter what you're doing off that line of scrimmage. Just watch it again, full speed. Great job by Gallup stepping wide, stepping outside that DB's frame and getting him off that platform. Okay, so now second tip to getting a more explosive cut is you have to commit your upper body 
and commit your stride to the break. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So we're looking at this dive release right here. So a dive release is we're trying to sell a drag route. So we're going to be taking like two hard steps to the inside, one, two, right? So it's just literally like he comes off the line of scrimmage. It's just one, two to the inside. Now we have to make sure to give this cut more like suddenness, more explosiveness. I need to commit with the upper half. So I'll play this full speed and then we'll take a look at it. So one, two to the inside, breaks up to the outside release on this fade route. That's a great example of a dive release and how it's supposed to be executed. So now this applies for a diamond release where you like have an inside shade DB and you got to run a slant and you set him up outside with three hard steps and he commits and you slip underneath. It's all about selling the route, right? But again, what gets that like sudden break? Everybody loves to talk about, oh, he's got a, he's got explosive cuts. That, that how he made a real sudden stick at the top of the route. Whatever it is, how do you get that? So many wide receivers, what they'll do is they'll round to the break, right? So he's taking this dive release. That's the first step. So that's one, two. Now, what a lot of guys will do is before they get to that second cut selling the drag route, they won't have this where your shoulders and your hips, everything about this is saying that he's trying to cross this DB's face and trying to just literally run a drag, run, maybe take an inside release, go run a dig, whatever it is, trying to work inside. But everything about this says that with his upper body. And that's where the DB is supposed to be watching. DB is supposed to be watching upper body. And that's what forces this cut to be sudden. Because if you can commit to the route, the only way you're able to change direction is by being sudden. So that's why that's the third tip to get more explosive cuts is committing to it. Because that's almost like a way of tricking your mind to, okay, I got to put the brakes on right now. Okay, I got to be as sudden as I can with that cut to be able to get back to the outside because that's ultimately my goal. But it starts with committing the eyes, committing the shoulders, committing the hips. Everything has to commit. So many wide receivers, they'll do a release like this and they start to turn that shoulder, they start to turn that hip and their upper body's already getting out of the route and that takes away explosion with the foot because you're manually trying to change direction. You're not letting the cut be the thing that changes direction for you. So make sure, third tip to make more explosive cuts, commit to it with your upper body. No different if you're running with the ball and you, you have the ball, you're getting some yards after the catch and you're running, like let's say you're running upfield this way and you got a DB who's taking an angle and you want to put the brakes on right here and slip under underneath. You can't start to round it because that DB on that angle will be able to make that play and your cut ain't going to be explosive. You got to commit to it then bam, put my foot in the ground suddenly to change that direction. That will give you more explosions. Watch it again, full speed. Great job setting him up with this dive release, committing to it to sell the route. That's what gets the DB off the platform and committing to it to get that nice sudden cut at the top of the break. Okay. So now, Fourth tip to getting a more explosive cut, fellas, is you have to trust your hips with the break and actually drop your butt, not bend at the waist. So let's watch this rider from Tyreek Hill. He's going to be running like a, a slant out route, kind of like a blaze out, if you will. Let's watch it full speed. So he does a great job of actually dropping his hips into the break rather than being slow and kind of chopping his steps and bending at the waist, right? So let's watch it. Let's watch this break point. So, so many guys struggle with this. So many guys, like they, they're, they know that they're supposed to get low. Like, let's say we got to make a break point right here. Let's say this is like a cone, right? Let's say this is a cone that I got to get around. A lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll just slow down and then they get around the cone, right? You want to make sure that instead of doing that, you want to actually drop to be able to create some energy to have a tight cut. But at the same time, I'm fast. But now a lot of guys know that, okay, I got to get low. So what they'll do is they'll bend at the waist. They'll go forward, but they don't actually drop their butt. They don't actually have a change in pad level. They don't change levels, right? But Tyree Kill does such a great job because he actually drops his butt down. Now, a lot of people, when they drop their butt down, their chest is straight up in the air. They're almost leaning back. All that weight's on their heels. We know we don't want to do that. But Tyreek Hill does a great job of actually dropping his hips, dropping his butt down, but maintaining a good upper body pad level. His chin is able to go to that knee. He's able to stay in this explosive spot right here to where he could create some energy. And that energy creation comes from being low. It's like a 40-yard dash, right? Like if you're running a 40-yard dash, that first 10 yards, it's all about that drive phase, right? You're trying to be as explosive as possible to give yourself acceleration into the route, right? So as a wide receiver, this is like considered that drive phase. I'm trying to be as explosive as possible, get to that explosive pad level position so that could create energy and shoot me out of the route so I could get back to the ball. That's the entire goal. That's why we do this, okay? So let's watch the thing again, full speed. So make sure, fourth tip to get more explosive cuts. We are actually dropping my hips, staying in a good pad level rather than bending at the waist and slowing down to make that change of direction when I drop my hips into a break. And again, same principle applies. I got to commit 
commit to it. The only way you have a violent hip drop is by committing to it. Like the last tip we talked about, I got to commit my hips, my shoulders, my eyes, my stride. Everything has to stay committed. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job selling the slant, dropping those hips violently, and then being able to get out of this route. Okay, so now here's the deal. I've shown this route a few times on this page, and this is like that 10 yard out that AJ Brown ran against Ramsey. Now, everybody knows when you got to run a deep out and you have an outside shade DB, you want to attack the inside shoulder, trying to get him to flip his hips, and then we slip back underneath, right? That's the entire goal. It'd be no different if he was pressed. You would take the inside release, you'd get him to commit to the fade, then we'd slip under. Now, for us to be able to do this, we got to do a couple things. We got to be fast. We have to self fade. We have to be in stride. So the fifth tip to get a more explosive cut is you got to be able to have leg strength. So let me show you. Let me let me explain. Let me show you why this example. I want to talk about that because he's about freaking 12, 10 to 12, maybe even 15 yards downfield. And he's got to put the brakes on, on a dime ultimately picked off. Cause it was a late throw. Everybody knows it's a late throw. So when you make this break, fellas, like you got to have incredible knee stability ankle stability, and leg strength to be able to make this cut. That's why it's so important for wide receivers to work those specific positions, specific exercises in the gym, like one-legged exercise, leg strengthening exercise, explosive exercises, because that will translate to on-the-field play. That translates to this right here. Not a lot of wide receivers can do this. I'd be lying to you if I could pretend like a beginner wide receiver who's never been in the gym, who has no leg strength, who has no ankle and knee stability, can just go out there, run 15 yards, and cut on a dime off of one foot. It's not realistic. You have to do drills that build on on that you have to do exercises that build your ankle knee strength leg strength glute strength hamstring strength all those exercises are so important to develop that cut and to develop that explosive cut to where you can actually absorb force because i, I don't believe that anybody could could do the technique right but when you want to do it 15 yards downfield you want to have that elite next level route running you have to bring those skills to the table because this is a incredibly hard break to make 15 yards downfield running full speed you got to have some leg strength knee stability and ankle stability so that's the fifth tip to get more explosive cuts you got to make sure you're doing those right exercises in the gym, on the field to build leg strength, knee strength, and ankle strength. Okay, let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. Great job pushing inside, having that sudden cut, and being able to run full speed. All principles that we talked about today apply. Foot strike, committing the pad level, committing with speed, committing those eyes to it, and actually having that sudden break to create that explosion. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. I always appreciate the feedback, and it's always great to hear from you guys as well. And again, fellas, if you guys would like a 12-week wide receiver gym workout plan, all those specific exercises wide receivers need to do to improve their leg strength, ankle strength, knee stability, ankle stability, overall overall strength, explosiveness, power, all that stuff. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.